Greetings, mathematicians. Mr. McNeil here. Uh, today, we are looking at Unit 5, Lesson 4, Interpret Remainders. Uh, that is a new word for some. Let's go ahead and say it together. In -ter -pret. Look at all the, the blends we have. All right. Now, our objective, I will solve division problems with remainders and determine what it means and decide how to represent the extras. All right. Now, looking here, let's see. When we talk about remainders, this is what we're talking about, our extras, the things that are left over in the quotient. So we have some key vocabulary. I'll carefully zoom. Hopefully my camera doesn't freak out again. All right, remainder. So what is a remainder? Let's define it. The amount left over in a quotient. Now, quick reminder, quotient, this means answer of a division problem. Now, interpreting is a word that we don't normally apply to math. Uh, interpreting usually means we're determining meaning. So interpret. This is something we normally think about when we're um, exchanging information between two languages. Um, you know, what does it mean in one language? How do you say it in another language? Here, what we're, what we're interpreting is, what does a remainder actually mean? Sure, it's left over, but what does that mean to me as a learner, as a reader, as a student, or a human being on this blue planet that we're living on? So the best way I can think of explaining it is pizza analogy, burr, 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 burr. pizza analogy. That's a new thing I'm working on. All right, got a word problem here. Take a moment if you need to, you can pause it and jot this word problem into your notebook. All right, welcome back. Let's take a look and read the word problem together. Costco pizzas cost $11 each. Hmm. Cost, cost, fantastic. 11 bucks, not bad for a whole pizza. So if it's 11 each, that's gonna be one whole pizza. Let's cut it. Let's put a crust on it. Put some pepperoni on there. Yeah, there we go, we got a pizza. One pizza, $11. If fifth grade collects, $219. Oh boy, that's a lot. Uh, this is real money, not Husky Bucks. How many pizzas would we be able to buy? So first off, we want to pick this problem apart. We want to know what is being divided. Are we dividing pizzas or money? What do you guys think? Pizza or money? Pizza, money, money, pizza, pizza, money. Oh, that's right, it's money. Now we're gonna split up the money. We have two numbers here. We have 11, we have 219. Now that 11 really counts as one pizza. So here's the next question. Which number goes where? If we are setting this up traditionally, we're using our fraction bar here. What number is the dividend on the inside? What number is the divisor on the outside? Take a look at your options, 11, 219. Which one is the total amount of money that we have? That's right, 219. We're gonna put that on the inside. Where are we putting it? Excellent. Now let's take our $11, that's gonna become our divisor. We've got 11 and we've got them in the right place. Let's go ahead and work this one out. Can 11 go into two? Nope. Can it go into 21? Oh, I wish. I know it can go in there once. Twice would we be over. So 11 times two is 22. That's one too many. So we've got to look at the whole thing here. We've got to decide how many 11s fit in 219. Now this is where our rounding skills from the last lesson come in. 
11. Is it closer to 10 or closer to 20? It's closer to 10. I just realized it's really small. Closer to 10. So how many 10s fit into 219? Now, I know it's going to be a single digit. So at most, it can be 9. At the least, it can be a 1. Well, it can't be a 1. We know. We know we can fit one 11 in there, but it's going to be more than that. So more than one, less than 10. So let's, if we multiply nine times 10, we get 90. Nine times one, we get, what do we get? Oh, we're, we're skipping a step here. Reverse, remind. How many 11s fit into 21? We've got one. One fits in, we've got a remainder. 21 minus 11, we get 10. Let's bring down our nine. Gets a little bit easier when we, we don't skip that step. How many 11s fit into 109? I know there's 10 10s in 100, but we need a single digit number. Let's go for nine, let's see what happens. Nine times 10 is 90. Nine times one is nine. We've got 99. Could we fit another 11 in there? We put 11 more on there. We added 11 to 99. We would be slightly over. So let's go ahead and just subtract that out. Nine minus nine is zero. 10 minus nine, got one. So our remainder is Remainder, 10. What does that actually mean now? So if we have $219 and we divide it by 11, because that's the cost of one pizza, 19, our quotient, is going to tell us how many pizzas we can actually buy. So we could buy 19 whole pizzas. What do we need this remainder for? Well, I'm going to give you a couple of options on the next page. All right, if you need to pause and get caught up, try not to skip any steps, All right? Mathematicians on the next page, I'm gonna adjust my camera a bit. Let's put a circle map here. This is most of the page. If you wanna see what I have down below, I've just got our, our instructions. So on the whole page, we want most of the page for the circle map. Interpretation options. Option number one. We're just going to use just the whole number. Only the whole number. How many pizzas can we get total? 19 pizzas total. Does it help that we have change left over? Sure, money's great, but is that going to get us more pizza? No, it's not. All right, let's see. Next one, option number two. I'll switch colors. We could round up. So we've got 19 pizzas and let's see, 19 and 10, 11. So that's almost one whole, one extra pizza, right? So we could say we have about... $20 or 20 pizzas worth of money. How many pizzas are we picking up? About 20. All right, we could round it up. Third option. This one's the easiest. We could represent it as a fraction. We have 19 pizzas and 10 elevenths of a pizza. Maybe this one's not the best, all right? And let's see, let's keep this in frame. Option number four. We're going with decimal. Now, if we were gonna get a decimal, we'd have to keep going with our problem. So for instance, we've got our 219, Divide by 11, we ended up with 19 on top. Let's see, and then it was minus 11. 
Got us 109 because we brought the 9 down. Subtracted 99. We got the 10. Now, when we hit the bottom of a remainder, we have an option of putting a decimal in the dividend. Where can we put it? In the dividend. Extend the bar a little bit. Put a zero in. We can bring down an extra zero. How many 11s fit into 100? We know it's 9. So we put our decimal there, 9. We end up with 99. You're going to notice we're going to be stuck in a pattern. It's just going to be all these 9s. So let's see. Subtract. We have one left over. We need another zero. Bring it down. Zero. How many 11s go into 10? Zero. And then we keep bringing zeros down. Oh, how many will go in? Nine. So we're going to end up with a, a repeating decimal of 19.90. It's going to keep repeating nine zero nine zero nine zero forever until it doesn't even matter anymore. Because we'll just keep bringing these zeros down. This might not be the best way to represent it. Now, if you are going to represent with a decimal and it's money, we usually want to stop at the hundredths place. All right. And the last one, you're going to love this one. Are you ready? I'm out of color. So let's just reuse blue. Option number five, just use the remainder. So we could say it's 19 pizzas. Whoops, spelled pizza wrong. Pizzas and R for remainder, 10. All right. I know many of you are going to like this one, but to be honest with you, TBH guys, this whole thing is, I'm going to give this a title at the top. It is sit you a shun oh. Put it together, situational. So depending on the problem and what they're asking for, one of these options is going to be the best. All right. Now, to expand on this, I need you guys to check out page 105 in the homework book. There are five or six problems that uh, you'll have to work out and then you're gonna have to decide what the situation is, which option is best. And I wanna check those out before you head to Think Central. But thanks for watching, math mathematicians. I'll see you in class.